in about 1900, it was theorized that the atom, was composed of smallest particle, what we today known as electron, proton, and neutron. But if you're a 12th standard student, then, you may think that electrons, proton and neutrons are the fundamental particle that cannot be further divided into their subparts. But if you are a university student, then, you know it that these are not fundamental particle. In the 1960s, scientists discovered that protons and neutrons are composed of even smaller particles than first believed. The term quarks came about from an American physicist named Gell-Mann. He borrowed the term from a line in James Joyce's Finnegan's Wake, three quarks for must remark. The leptons are a class of particles that includes the electron, muon, and neutrino. They are thought not to be made up of quarks. Each bosons participate in the electromagnetic force. All the four fundamental forces exist because of bosons. And on the other hand quarks are the samlest known fundamental particle in the whole universe. Quarks are as small or small as physicists can measure. Quarks can not further divide it into subparts. Quarks are believed to be six types or flavors. Quark flavors are now called up, down, charm, strange, top and bottom. Up and down are the lightest and they make all the matter around us. The next two lightest of the quarks, strange and charm, are found in cosmic rays that originate in space. The two heaviest of the quarks, top and bottom, have not yet been found in nature. Scientists are only able to produce them in the lab. It is believed that the heavier quarks decay to the lighter quarks and that is why we don't see the heaviest in nature. Quarks are always found in combination and cannot so far as known occur by themselves. Quarks can combine in many different ways forming up to 100 different particles. The combination of quarks determines the type of particles formed. For example, a proton is composed of two up and one down quarks, while a neutron is composed of one up and two down quarks. Each quark have quantum number and specific charge. Quarks do not follow general quantization rule of charge. Quarks have specific charge that is fraction of the standard charge of proton, E. This made quarks different from all other fundamental particles in the universe. As we see, proton has two up and one down quarks. This is the violation of Pauli exclusion principle which state that no two identical objects can occupy the same place. Yet proton contains two up quarks. Because of this contradiction, it was proposed that quarks must have another property. This new property was labeled as color, don't confused with common understanding of colors. There are six color termed as red, blue, green, anti-red, anti-blue and anti-green. The anti-colors belong to the anti-particles. Here a new question arises does quarks particles have color? The answer is no. Quarks don't actually have colors. While quarks have color, but the particles that quark makes up are colorless. Color, thus, is the property of quarks that allows two identical quarks to exist in the same particle simultaneously. One of the four fundamental forces is the strong force, which holds quarks together. This strong interactions is completely based on color, just as electromagnetic interactions are based on electric charge. Quantum current dynamics QCD is the theory to explain how quarks have strong interaction. Color is also the source of the strong or color force, which binds quarks together. Color like a charge, is a conserved quantity which cannot be created or destroyed. 
The main difference between QCD and quantum electrodynamic is that charge is replaced by color. Colored quarks attract one another by exchanging gluons, of which there are eight types. Gluons are massless, have spin one, travel at the speed of light, and carry both a color and a different anticolor. When a quark emits or absorbs a gluon, it changes color, a process that happens constantly. Therefore a proton, UUD, which must have all three colors, can have several different arrangements. There are imaginary field lines between quarks much as there are in quantum electrodynamics. Protons sticking together in the nucleus of an atom, even though they all have same charge. The quark of one proton, become glued to the quarks of another proton, and the attraction between the quarks is strong enough to overcome the repulsion between the charge.